Hey, this is Keith Keller with For the Tech of It. And this is a show that's going to talk to you about technology for normal folks. So in this episode, I want to put some focus on helping you to greatly reduce the high costs of satellite TV and cable TV. It's a journey that I went through as well, and I want to share with you what I did to cut my costs by more than half. Be right back. So before we get going, I want you to know that in full disclosure, while I do use some of the technologies that we'll be talking about in this video, the opinions that you hear are my own opinions, and I purchased the equipment that I use with my own funds. So let's get started. Let's take a trip back in time and move forward from there. From the 1950s to sometime in the early to mid 80s, TV shows were broadcasted over the air. I grew up in the early 70s, and I can remember when my dad or I would go outside uh, to manually turn the antenna until the TV station we wanted to watch became visible. Now, we did that because the TV towers were located roughly 50 miles apart, and they were in different directions. Now, it wasn't until sometime, I'd say in the first half of the 80s, that cable TV was made available in my hometown. I remember getting off the school bus as it arrived near my home and seeing the cable TV trucks running that black coaxial cable along the telephone poles. It was after that that cable TV opened up a whole new world of TV viewing for so many people. Now prior to the wider availability of cable and satellite TV over the air was pretty much king of the hill. But it came with some caveats. There was a limited amount of content. Broadcast quality depended greatly on tower locations and where you lived, what type of terrain surrounded your area. No additional charge uh, for TV broadcasts were there. That was a good thing because you just bought the TV and Got an antenna and turned it in the direction of the antenna of the broadcast tower and you were good to go. Also, one thing that I do remember very well was that TV went off after midnight. You'd hear the national anthem play and then you'd see the colored bars. I'm not sure how many of you are old enough to remember that. Now, many people would argue that that was a good thing, that TV went off the air. So with respect to satellite and, and cable subscriptions, you know, you had far more content. There was an improved broadcast quality. And the set-top box, you know, became really a common household appliance at that time. You had access to 24-hour content, good or bad, but it all came with additional costs. Now let's talk a little bit more about those costs here. In May of 2020, decisiondata.org reported that the average cable TV bill now exceeds all other household utility bills combined. Think about that for a moment. That's quite telling, folks. The article went on to state that the average household cable package is now $217.42 per month whereas the average household spends roughly $205.50 per month on all major utilities combined. Now, that's electricity, gas, sewer, water, garbage pickup. In the average household, cable uh, TV package costs continue to increase year over year. I can tell you, that I've witnessed these rising prices as a formal cable TV and later satellite TV subscriber. With uh, satellite TV, as long as you're under contract with them, usually it's a minimum of like two years. The prices aren't too horrible. However, it does lead me to the next topic that we want to discuss. Satellite versus cable. Who wins? My question is, who cares? So, reviews.org in August of 2019 
uh, published an article that took a look at uh, this whole cable versus satellite debacle. And I'm going to include the links to these articles that I'm mentioning uh, here in this particular video. I'll, I'll include that in the show notes. So reviews.org stated that in the battle of cable versus satellite TV service, there's really no absolute winner here. The biggest differences between cable and satellite TV services are the installation, the cost of the equipment, and the price. There is, however, a guaranteed loser, and it's going to be your bank account. That's something I learned pretty quickly. So what can be done about all this? Good question. Let's see if we can answer that. So cord shaving, many of you have heard the term cord cutting. I kind of prefer the term cord shaving. And what I mean by cord shaving is that you'll still be hanging on to whoever your broadband service provider is, whether it's a cable company or a fiber or whatever. So I have some useful tips for you, though. Write down the list of shows that you and the family watch most, as well as the networks for each of those shows. You'll want to go to antennaweb.org and look for those networks in your area, and I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later on in the video. And for any of those shows that are not available over the air, research which internet streaming services will broadcast these shows. For example, uh, is it on Hulu? Is it on Sling TV or Philo or one of these other uh, streaming services that I have listed here on this site? So let's turn our attention to uh, the different types of cord shaving devices that are out there. Um, there are several of these media streaming technologies out on the market today, and they're all priced for pretty much any budget. So, of course, you have the well-known Roku device. Prices range from $29.99 US up to $179.99. You have the NVIDIA Shield uh, Android TV solution, very powerful uh, solution. Of course, you have smart TVs, and most of the smart TVs have their own uh, app stores, if you will, where you can go and download, you know, live TV apps, Netflix, uh, YouTube, uh, some have Sling TV, uh, some even come with the Roku uh, built into them. There's the Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, the Google Chromecast, um, that's the newer Google Chromecast, there's uh, TiVo, and of course there's Channel Master. So over-the-air streaming devices. So the over-the-air streaming devices typically have TV tuners in them. And the, with the TV tuners, it also provides uh, DVR capability. So you can record and stream the TV broadcasts, but you will need an antenna. And we'll talk a little bit more about the antenna uh, here in the video shortly. But here are some popular OTA devices. You have the Channel Master, the Tableau, a Dual and Quad, the TiVo Edge, uh, for antenna, the Silicon Dust HD Home Run, Amazon Fire TV Recast, and the Air TV devices. Also, uh, there are two great resources you'll, def you'll definitely want to check out, uh, which will help you to choose the right antenna for your needs based on where you're located. Uh, one of those is the antennamanpa.com website, as well as antennaweb.org. AntennaWeb.org allows you to also enter uh, your zip code or your address, and it will show you a list of channels that should be uh, widely available via over the air at that or at or near that location where you are. And it'll pull up a map as well and show you where your broadcast towers are. So definitely check out those two websites. So over the air makes a bold comeback. Satellite TV subscriptions are now becoming what I call the old new normal. What's replacing it? Well, OTA, of course, which is making that bold comeback. But OTA coupled with the internet streaming services like Netflix, Sling TV, uh, Disney Plus, uh, Hulu, and, and so forth and so on. So it's always important, again, to remember the tips that I've provided you with. Write down the shows you and your family watch most as well. Go to antennaweb.org or antenna man PA, and that'll help you to choose the right antenna. 
And for any shows that aren't available over the air, research which internet streaming services will broadcast those shows for you. So here was my cord cutting or cord shaving journey, rather. Uh, from cable to satellite to OTA and internet streaming services, there were some reasons why I decided to move to OTA and internet streaming services back in 2014. So as I mentioned earlier with respect to cable TV costs and the whole comparison between satellite and cable TV, I was a satellite subscriber at the time. And my satellite subscription costs, because I was no longer under contract, was over $200 a month. And at that point, I was just tired of dealing with contracts. I just didn't want to sign any more year-long, two-year-long, whatever contracts with satellite provider. In addition to that, I came to realize that more than 80% of the over 120 channels that we had on our service were just, nobody was watching them. I wasn't watching, my wife wasn't watching. Our kids weren't watching them. They were just sitting there going to waste. There was no content on those channels that we were, inter we were even interested in watching. So also at that time, we were slowly becoming empty nesters. You know, the kids were getting ready to go off to college. My daughter was in high school. My son was moving on into college. And our, our TV viewing habits began to change uh, quite a bit. Where to, It reached a point where neither cable nor satellite, even their base package, was sufficient for us. We just didn't care for the type of uh, content that those uh, companies were offering. So I also looked at, you know, what 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 would be our cost savings here, truthfully? And as I began to run some of the numbers, I came to realize that you know, I'm spending twenty four hundred dollars a year currently with satellite, and if I move to over the air with you know internet streaming services i could cut my cost down to one quarter if not even less than that so for me that was really you know the decision was an absolute no-brainer it was just time to move so i had some upfront requirements first off i needed to make sure that this whatever solution i went with there was a whole home you know, capability, it had whole home capability with DVR support. Uh, and why was that important? Because I wanted to be able to watch recorded shows as well as stream uh, shows that we were streaming on multiple TVs. Because sometimes my wife may be in the back, I'd be in the front. Or if we had, you know, guests or something over, they'd be upstairs. Or, you know, we just needed to make sure that it supported. Uh, that whole home capability, one device that allowed me to stream to multiple televisions. I wanted to make sure it was easy to use and easy to set up. I didn't want to have to relearn how to find content on TV. I wanted to make sure it supported my existing Roku devices because we already had Roku that we were using here on, on our TVs. And I wanted to make sure that at least 80% of our shows were available and come to find out 100% of our shows are now available. Um, you need it to support Wi-Fi and or Ethernet, which it does. And I also wanted to be able to view shows while away from home. So while our DVR is recording uh, programs while we were away, if we were traveling somewhere, for example, I wanted to be able to watch it on my phone or on a laptop or something uh, from a hotel, from uh, you know, relatives, homes, or wherever. So what that led us to, as we began to dig into this a bit, was the Tableau DVR solution. It seemed to fit, at the time, in 2014, it seemed to fit the bill the best. Now, since that time, uh, their competitors have made some really good inroads, and they, they're competing a little bit better with Tableau now, so you definitely want to check out the others. So my upfront investment was you know, the Tableau DVR, um, and I bought a VHF, UHF antenna, just a plain set of rabbit ears. And what's, and what's interesting is that um, in my area, the rabbit ears work perfectly. I mean, we catch right now, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of just over 40 channels. And many of those channels we don't watch either, but 
It's not like I'm paying for it or anything, right? So if we look at the device and the pricing options, you know, the, the Tableau, uh, Tableau has, as I mentioned earlier, a Tableau Quad and a Tableau Dual. So it has a four tuner or two tuner device. So you can pick and choose which one you want uh, out of that. Maybe save a little money, go with the two tuner. But if you're going to be recording a lot of shows and watching things at the same time, then you may want to take a look at the four tuner device. So that's the Tableau DVR Quad. Uh, the UHF antenna, I did go to Antenna Web and come to find out a simple $18 a set of rabbit ears was perfect for me. Uh, the Tableau uh, TV Guide does have a data subscription and uh, you have an option here. Uh, you can go $4.99 a month, $4.99 a month, or you can just pay it annually. I decided after a couple of months of trying it out, that I wanted to go with the lifetime. So I paid the $149.99 and now I have the Tableau TV Guide for Life. So this is a screenshot of what the Tableau Guide looks like. Uh, this is through my web browser, but if you run it on Roku or a uh, smart TV, or you run it with the, I think it's the Amazon Fire TV, or the, the um, an NVIDIA Shield device, the guide looks very similar to this. Now I've tried it with multiple web browsers. I've tried it with Firefox, Google Chrome and Google Chromium, uh, Apple Safari on Mac OS, and the Microsoft Edge browser. And it works fine for all of those browsers. And if you look here towards the bottom, so this is from Tableau's website. They list Apple TV is supported, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV. There's even an app for the Xbox. I have one. I have an Xbox One, and it works fine. Uh, Windows 10, uh, Google Chrome OS, and of course iOS and Android. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android device, works great. Also, for those of you who uh, use the Linux operating system, as I do, it works fine with Linux. I've tried it with Fedora and Ubuntu, using Firefox, Chrome and Chromium. Everything works fine. So you're good to go there, too. And these are a couple of screenshots of the Tableau, Tableau mobile app uh, running on my phone. And I have an Android phone, but it looks very similar to this on iPhones as well. So this is a landscape view on the right and a portrait view here on the left of the guide. So now let's summarize a few things here. We talked about media streaming devices. We talked about over the air uh, devices and the need to have an antenna for those devices. We talked about some of the streaming services. It's just very important for you to do a bit, little bit of research up front Figure out currently what your costs are if you're a cable or satellite subscriber. Take a look at your monthly bill and multiply that times 12. Also take a look at how much content is being provided by those um, uh, cable or satellite providers and how much of that are you actually watching. Are you paying for a lot of content that you have no interest in, no interest in viewing whatsoever? Then compare that to the price of you know, a few internet uh, streaming services, maybe Netflix, if you're interested in the Disney Plus package, or if you're an Amazon subscriber, you already get Amazon Prime Video as a part of that subscription. Um, and again, some of these companies may offer student discounts. So if you're a college student or what have you, you may be able to get a pretty good discount on those subscription services. Take a look at antennaweb.org to see which networks are broadcast uh, in your area. And look at antennaweb.org as well as Antenna Man PA to help you to determine what type of antenna uh, will best uh, provide you with access to those channels that you care about most. So also let me know, I'm, I was considering uh, for a future video Maybe uh, walking you guys through uh, the Tableau DVR, kind of review the device for you since I've had this one since 2014. 
I know quite a lot about it. I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know down in the comments. If uh, any of you have experience using any of these other devices that I mentioned, or maybe some that I didn't mention in this particular uh, episode, definitely, definitely talk about that uh, in the comments as well. All right, so until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.